Hey, welcome back to Questions Up for Coffee. I'm your host, Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Can I get you a cup of coffee? This week, we're dealing with a question concerning the Lord's Supper. What is its point? What's the point of taking communion? Great question. Very important question. Let's take a look together. The Lord's Supper has a couple of different names. In the U.S., we call it communion. We call it the Lord's Supper. Things like that. Um, however, in the original language, in the Greek language, it's often translated as the Eucharist, the giving of thanks. The point of the Lord's Supper is just that, to be grateful for what Jesus has done for us. If you walk into most churches of Christ in the U.S., what you're going to see is the Lord's Supper given and observed every Sunday morning. Um, and for those who have to work, it's also offered again Sunday night. Um, let's take a look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 concerning the Lord's Supper. Now we are only going to look at verses 23 through 26, but we'll get an idea of what the Lord's Supper is meant to be. Although it is a very deep issue that the whole chapter pretty much should be considered as well as other, other sources. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. Let's read together. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Okay. So what we want to notice here is three different things. We want to notice three points that Paul makes, two very explicit observations, and one uh, implied in one of the verses. Let's take a look. Jesus says in uh, verses 24 and 25 when he's given the command uh, for the Lord's Supper as they're observing that last Passover together, he says that they are to do this in a remembrance of him. They are to uh, remember him, remember his teachings, remember his sacrifice, uh, remember the new covenant that he brought to them through his blood. The, the new covenant that God had been promising for hundreds of years prior to this was finally going to come into action and, and begin because of what was about to happen the Lord's Supper serves as a remembrance of Jesus' death, of that new covenant. Also, it serves as a, a remembrance that they are a body because that covenant, that, that sacrifice, brought Jews and Gentiles together, okay? The second thing that it does is when we are taking of the unleavened bread, it symbolizes the Lord's body that was hung on the cross for you and me, that, that was offered for us. When we take of uh, the, the fruit of the vine, uh, in the U.S., often grape juice. In other countries, sometimes it's, you know, uh, wine of sorts. Uh, either way, it's the fruit of the vine. It symbolizes his blood that was shed for us, that reconciles us with God. Um, so, in that case, we are proclaiming what Jesus has done for us. And we are proclaiming the Lord's faithfulness to his promises that he made so many years ago to Israel and even prior to Israel, all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned. God says, I'm going to fix this. And he he promises that there would eventually be a savior to come. But the third thing that you see here is a promise that the Lord is going to return again because we are to be 
uh, proclaiming the Lord's death, then Paul says, until he comes. The implication there is that he's coming back. But also the implication there is he's not dead any longer. So as we take the Lord's Supper, we are saying that the Lord died for us, but we are also saying he didn't stay dead, that God raised him from the dead, and he's coming back one day, a day that we are longing for and waiting for. The Lord's Supper reminds us to anticipate that day, to look forward to it, to yearn for it. It gives us hope that this world is not all there is. Now, like I said in the beginning, the Lord's Supper is a very complex issue. Uh, there's no way that we can cover it in one short video. But this at least gives us an idea of what the point or points of the Lord's Supper are. So hopefully it will bless your worship next time you walk in on a Sunday to worship God and you partake of communion. You'll have a better idea of what we're doing. I have a question for you. What do you do when you are taking communion to focus your mind and your heart on what Jesus has done for you? What do you do? There have been a number of things I've seen people do in the past that help them to focus. There have been a number of things I've tried to help me to focus, some of, some of which have worked very, very well, some of which have not worked at all. What do you do? Leave me a comment in the questions below. I'd love to talk to you about them and maybe even implement some of your own ideas in my worship, in my life, so that I can focus better. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the valuable things that people have been asking. Wouldn't want you to miss any of them. Keep pressing forward.